Hello, hello everyone. It's me, Chafkamana Coffee, back with another episode of my RI tutorial series. Now, this is the sort of first episode where we're actually going to play Civ. Uh, funny that. <laughs> uh, so, let's start off. Uh, you start with two units, a warrior and a settler. The settler builds cities, the warrior does fighting, scouting, that sort of thing. Uh, the first thing I would recommend you do, uh, which a lot of you probably noticed I, I do when I when I play Civ, is I turn on the Show All Resources display. It's just here in the bottom right, underneath your, your Civ name. Uh, this displays what resources are around the area. Now, oh, my ear was a little itchy. All right, um, let me have some tea and then we'll, we'll carry on. Ah, delicious. All right, so we can see what resources we have around us. We have, uh, we've got some deer, we've got some wheat, we've got some cows. We're by the coast. We've got fresh water. If, uh, if we went one north with our settler, we would have fresh water on our tile, uh, but we would miss out on a lot of resources. Normally, I would recommend just settling in place, uh, and our current location isn't that bad, actually. Uh, we don't have a huge amount of hills. We've only got like that one there, one there. We've also got our capital spot, which will uh, produce a decent amount of production. Um, and I suppose the cows also give uh, an alright amount of production as well. So, yeah, I'm fine with that. We've also got uh, ivory over here, elephants. So we will be able to get war elephants later on. Um, in most cases, I would recommend you settle right where your settler starts. There are a few situations where you may consider moving. Um, normally you want your your warrior to scout out to see if there are any other resources you might want to move towards. Um, our warrior spawned down here. Ideally, our warrior would have spawned up here. So I could have checked to see if there was a resource here or here or something like up here that would have been in range had we moved north. But they spawn down here, so that's just part of RNG. Um, but normally you can settle in place and it's perfectly fine. So we're going to settle in place. Uh, the first thing you want to do is, well, you can take a look at what your city is doing. Um, and normally your city is going to want to grow uh, at the start of the game. Uh, it's a good idea to just let it grow. Uh, but we do need to decide what we want to build next. Uh, we do have access to deer, so a hunter's cabin will actually provide extra commerce. Not a bad thing to start off with since it gives extra food. Uh, an extra warrior helps with scouting. Um, this is almost always my first recommendation. Uh, we do, however, build settlers faster because we're an expansionist sieve. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open with a warrior and probably build a settler after that. Because I feel like uh, we should make use of our expansionist bonus as quickly as possible. Also because we're playing on Noble and I don't have Raging Barbarians on. So building a settler very early on in the game won't actually be dangerous for us. So that is something I, I will consider as we go into the game. Now as far as technology goes. Um, we are next to the coast. And there are a few, there are a few techs early on in the game. Um, which are always useful because they reveal resources. Um, getting fishing would let us build fishing boats and fishing docks, uh, but we don't have any coastal resources, so that's not that important for us. Um, however, things like, for example, um, metalworking allows us to reveal copper. It's a very, very important resource to see if you have access to. Um, and tool making allows us to build scouts, proper scout units. And I'm going to go for woodworking afterwards. Woodworking is particularly important because it gives you access to your militia unit, which is going to be your early defense against uh, barbarians. Um, archers are also a good choice. Uh, certain civs have more powerful archers than militia. Some civs have more powerful militia. Um, I'm just going to go for the Militia because I would also like to discover if we have any Prime Timber, which is another very helpful resource to get early on in the game. Um, so normally my my early tech will be Metalworking, Toolmaking, and Woodworking. That's normally what I pick. 
Now, as far as scouting goes, uh, with your original, uh, your opening uh, warrior, uh, you want to try and scout in a large circle. Um, if you stand on hills, you get more vision, so I recommend trying to beeline towards hills. Um, don't move too far away from your capital. You want to try to discover coastline. Coastline is very important, um, since it will show you uh, uh, coastal resources. Um, and it's also a good idea to just settle along the coast anyway, because there's a lot of good trade bonuses for, for being on the coast. And we've already discovered another sieve. We've met the, uh, the Quichua. Uh, they are cautious of us. Uh, so the Incas are down here. Uh, and if we wanted to, uh, we can go take a look in our Civilopedia. And we can now see that the Incan Empire has now appeared on this, uh, on this list. And we can find... Um, the leader uh, of the Incas that we have met and take a look at their... Um, so this is Tupac Inca. And we can take a look at their personality if we wanted. Uh, so he's an administrator and a seafarer. So he's going to be very focused on settling the coast. Uh, he's excessive though, so he gets less money. So he's going to be very focused on building around the coast and also building um, larger cities. Uh, average tendency to build wonders, builds less units, willing to trade away large l uh, lump sums of gold. Uh, neutral initial attitude to other leaders, very interested in getting a peace deal. Hates weaker civs, indifferent to stronger civs, intolerant to border pressure. Dislikes open borders. So you can sort of get an idea of how the civ is going to react to you. Um... They seem like a bit of a pushover, honestly. They build less units, they like to peace out if they get in a war. Um, so yeah, seems like the sort of Civ that we could bully early on in the game for a bit of an advantage. So as you can see, they're sort of to our south, so we may want to build a city in this location early on to try to halt them from expanding uh, towards us. So we claim all these resources. Uh, that's going to be a sort of a good opening spot for us. So we need to explore this area around here to get a rough idea of where we might want to build our first city since we're already getting a settler. I wouldn't always recommend getting a settler this early on in the game, but because we are an expansionist civ and we build our settlers faster, I think it makes sense to do so. Uh, especially on lower difficulties. Uh, if you're playing on higher difficulties with Raging Barbs, it's a terrible idea because the Barbarians will destroy you. Um, but because I'm playing a little bit, you know, uh, de definitely within my comfort zone, I think that's fair enough. And it looks like there's another Civ over here as well. So let's go let's go meet them and see who we're, we've got uh, over to our east. Uh, oh, that was the Quichua. Oh, who's this then? Oh, this is a different Civ. Ah, okay. Well, that's um, good to know that we know where they are. Uh, let's try and stay away from the polar bears because they'll kill our, our warriors. Uh, warriors are particularly weak. Not a good idea to have them fighting many uh, barbarians. Uh, we're going to just attack that cheetah there. Uh, we almost certainly would lose fighting the polar bear, and I don't see a reason to waste my warrior, so let's bring them back. Uh, again, try to move up to hills, because hills provide... Oh, uh, we might we might lose uh, our warrior against those wolves there. Oh no, he managed to win, that's good. So we're going to give him uh, Woodsman 2, which gives him double movement inside of forests. Um, so let's move him down one and have him try to heal up a little bit. Okay, let's have this warrior move down there. So again, you just want to roughly map out sort of a, a vague circle around your, your capital. Uh, let's get an idea about the local area. Uh, there's some bears there. Um, they have a bonus at fighting in forests. They don't have a bonus at fighting in savannas, so we might beat them. Uh, no, we didn't beat them. That's not really a surprise. Um, you will lose early units to the Barbarians. Don't worry too much about it. It happens to everyone. Um, and we've managed to finish woodworking. 
uh, has our, our starting tech. Uh, another good one to go for is stone cutting. Um, it reveals stone and marble, which are the two main resources for building wonders early on in the game. It's a good idea to see if you have them. If you have them, it might inform your early strategy on whether you want to build a wonder or not, because you'll have the resources to build them faster. Um, so I think it's a good idea. This, this is sort of like the 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 trinity of early uh, resource discovery is uh, these techs down here. So I recommend you get them as quickly as you can because it'll it'll let you it helps you map out your your opening area. Right, we met the Mongolians. Um, I'm not sure where we met the Mongolians. Oh, they're over here. So they're probably up in the north here or further east. Um, so not something we necessarily need to worry about right now. Alright, there's some copper. Okay, so we know where some copper is. Copper's very important. We haven't discovered any additional resources yet, but we do have horses and we have elephants. Um, okay, I don't see any particular resources that we tacked for which is fine um what we're going to want to do after building a settler is building some militia we're going to want to build quite a few of them uh, and after that we want to build a worker um before the settler finishes i want to actually grab storytelling uh, because then we can build a storyteller circle which is an early way of getting culture and science um in your sort of first couple of cities that you build so it's a it's a good one for us to grab uh particularly early we lost a forest there that kind of sucks uh but never mind uh this warrior is now going to go take a little look see over here again um just to just to keep an eye uh on that area see if there's any barbarians around um or not um i'm now going to go over a little tool that I use for planning out my early expansion and that is if you hold down alt and press X that's what I use by default uh, I fa I'm fairly sure that's the default setting it brings up this little cross as you can see it matches the level 2 borders of your city now in civilization um, your your cities can work every tile within a two uh, cultural border radius um, so if you want to plan out what your cities can work on, uh, this is a great, great tool to use that. So for example, you might go, oh, this is a good spot for a city. Uh, but it turns out this actually gets additional fishing resources. So that is a nice spot. I think we'll get a city over there. Um, I can see a good spot for a city up here somewhere. Either here or here. Not really sure. And another city down here, which will get fresh water from the desert. Um, and it will also gives us access to copper. So I think a city there makes sense. And probably a city up here somewhere. I'm not sure where exactly yet, but there is a river running through there. You can you can sort of see the terrain on neighbouring uh, tiles. Like this is a forest here, and there's a river here, and I think that's grassland. There's some more tundra up there. Um, but yeah, that seems like a decent enough spot. And down here, uh, we could cramp in a few... We could Yeah, we could probably cramp a couple of cities in. I'm thinking one here gets used to the cows... Uh, the elephants and the horses there and another one further up closer to this river I think this is a good spot um, we get sheep we get wine we've got uh, some good we got a hill a couple of hills decent river tiles for for cottages and farms and it's also going to be our border city um, so this is probably the city I'll build first uh, because we want to make sure that we have uh, a presence to the east so that these sieves can't expand this way without us uh, being in the way um, and that's going to help let's go we're going to be able to do that thanks to our very early um, settler uh, we can get a new civic we can get animism instead of paganism um, it's animism's better if you have lots of jungle around we don't have any jungle around so i'm not gonna pick it up i don't really see the the need to so we're not going to. Um, our settlers move extra quickly because we have the bonus extra movement. So should be able to get a settler over to the new city spot nice and speedy. And then this city can start building up the sort of things that we need as well. Okay. And this warrior is just going to help protect the city uh, in the sort of early stages of the game. 
and we're going to want to grab a storyteller circle for culture. We're going to want to try to get a lot of culture in the city. Might be worth us building a wonder uh, to try to push its cultural borders out because that is the that is the Inca's capital. Um, so they will, uh, yeah, they will uh, want. Uh, they will get ge generically quite high culture there because it is a it is their capital. Their palace will give a decent amount of culture. Um, as you can see, our technology rate has dropped uh, because we've built another city. It is costing us gold, um, and so we've had to reduce the amount of technology we're gaining uh, to pay for it. But that's okay. Um, that's definitely something that we are willing to pay for. Okay, so we've finished researching agriculture. Uh, now I want to consider building the Nazca Lines. As I said, we want a early wonder here to try to push our culture out in that direction. And the Nazca Lines boost our farms, um, which means we need writing to get uh, the Nazca Lines. We also need mysticism. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab uh, writing first and then mysticism. Uh, writing also enables open borders. It's another tech I recommend you get early on in the game. Open borders allow you to uh, get a tech bonus if you research techs that other civs that you have open borders with, if they already have that uh, technology. Um, so, for example, if we open borders with the Mongolians or the Incans and they have a uh, technology of mysticism we would also get a bonus to researching mysticism so pretty handy um, other things we want to consider is picking up text to unlock our unique buildings um, in particular trade gives us our access to our sereni which is very good um, i would like to pick up animal husbandry we've got lots of cows and such around our our lands so we definitely want to get animal husbandry fairly early on a uh, road building is very useful, and we also need that for trade. And I think trade is one that we'll want to pick up pretty soon. After that, I'd like to grab bronze working and architecture. This enables cottages, and this enables slightly stronger units. Uh, and then we'll backtrack and grab archery. This is more or less what I grab every single game. I normally pick up bronze working a lot earlier on higher difficulties because the barbarians are a pain in the ass, and you need stronger units to fight them. Um, but, you know, for all intents and purposes, picking it up a little bit later isn't going to be a, too much of a problem for us, I don't think. Uh, now we have a uh, another unit to garrison the city, we can move this uh, warrior out to explore some more. Uh, so we're going to do just that. And we will prioritize exploring around... Um, the Incas, because I feel like they're going to be our first target. Now, we know that he doesn't like civilizations that are weaker than him. So as long as we keep our, our power ratio, you can see our power ratio down here. As long as we keep that higher than theirs, we should be able to stay on good relations with them. Um, so we just need to make sure we've got plenty of troops to keep uh, in their good books. Uh, I also want to discover the sieve down here, so let's get this warrior to go down there and take a look. Uh, it's the Dravidians. Uh, so it's the other, uh, it's the sort of South Indians, um, which is uh, pretty nice to meet them. Uh, we could also take a look at their their personality if we wanted. Uh, it's it's not something I normally do. I, I more or less know how the sieves are going to act, uh, or their leaders. Um, from playing the game a lot, but some of you that are less comfortable uh, with Realism Invictus may want to look that up just to get a uh, get an idea for it. Um, this city I would like to build. Getting a granary early wouldn't be a bad idea, actually. Um, but I think I'm going to build another uh, another unit here, and then and then another worker. Want to make sure I've got plenty of troops. As I said, um, we want to make sure we're well above the strength value of our neighbours because they do they they have a high opinion of strong civilizations, but they have a very low opinion of weak civilizations. Um, it's a general rule of thumb: don't be weak uh, because the AI will take advantage of it. So don't appear weak is what I should say, not don't be weak because sometimes you don't really have a choice. You just don't have a particularly good start position. Um, so you don't get off the uh, 
off to a great start. Um, but yeah, uh, generally speaking, try try to keep your military strength up, uh, so the AI has to respect that. And we've met the Berbers as well, which are probably off to our off to our west. Uh, we can now open borders with civilizations. We also have access to traditional custom instead of rule of fear. Now, rule of fear uh, is useful because it lets you build units faster. So it's, it's a good idea if you're playing on harder difficulties because you'll be able to build units to fight the barbarians and also other civs. But I think we're actually going to grab traditional custom because it uh, gives us more culture in all of our cities. And we're going to have quite close borders with two capitals. Uh, so we're going to need to be able to project our culture. Uh, quite a lot. So we're going to grab that. We can open borders with the Dravidians actually, which is something I am interested in doing. Um, so let's open borders with them. Cool. Um, I think after this warrior, we need to start getting ready to build the Nazca lines. Um, so I might build something quickly. Uh, I could build another... I might, I might build a scout actually. Just get a scout built. And I think this worker is going to come over here as quickly as possible, because um, I would like to get the uh, get the wonder built. I'm actually going to build a second worker. We're going to go quite heavy on the workers. Um, we need to get animal husbandry before we can build that up. I can build farms on the plains. I could build a mine. I think building a mine makes sense. Higher production will let us get that um, wonder built nice and quickly. Um, I am going to build an additional uh, defender for the city, just to be on the safe side. Uh, we've got a nice floodplain over here, it's a bit of a desert. A desert there and a desert over here, um, so we're quite close to the centre of the map. Uh, so we've got our second uh, defender for the city, I'm going to give him city garrison as well. And that should just uh, keep the AI off our back, they shouldn't be that interested in... Um, declaring war. We met the Neri tribes. Thoros II. I don't know this. Oh, it's the Armenians. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the Armenians, yeah. Uh, they've just renamed uh, a couple of the civs um, in recent patches. I patch my game using the SVN, so if you see any differences between my game and yours, that will be why. These are either the Assyrians or the Armenians. Um, so yeah, uh, if you want to know how to get the SVN version of Realism Invictus, uh, you just need to go on their forums and just take a look there. You'll be able to find it quickly enough. Right, uh, this guy, I'm going to give him City Garrison. Um, I'm going to move him down to this spot here. Uh, actually, let's move him onto this hill. Uh, the reason why is he'll fog bust to make sure no barbarians spawn in this general area. Uh, barbarians can't spawn in tiles that you can see, um, so it's a good idea to. Uh... There we go. There we go. Build the Nazca lines there. Uh, we've got this scout here. I'm going to give this scout and just tell him to automatically move around. I'm not too bothered where he scouts. I just want him to just be doing his thing. Um, this scout I'm going to have a bit more control over, and I recommend that's something you do as well, is, is focus on one scout and tell, if you want to really try hard you can like micromanage all your scouts, I, it's not necessary, you don't need to do that, um, just make sure that you're using some of your scouts more efficiently, um, and other scouts are just sort of cleaning up areas of the map that you maybe skipped over with your early warrior, or one of your early warriors. Um, so. As I was saying, identifying your early game and what you should focus on. Um, generally speaking, as I said, I identified that my civilization has a good building, one of my unique buildings at trade, so I'm trying to get the trade technology sooner. I also identified that the Nazca lines would be very useful for my unique improvement, and given that one of my cities I would like to have higher culture value in, um, I've decided to try rush the Nazca lines in that particular city. Um, so you can see how my evaluation has, is now uh, is now informing my strategy of play. And you'll need to do that um, yourself uh, as you play. It, again, it's something that comes with experience. You won't immediately be good at doing this. Um, I'm not the best civilization player. Um, so even things that I do are not necessarily correct all of the time. 
Um, but I have enough experience that I can make these calls uh, with a degree of certainty that they will pay off. Um, so th keep that in mind uh, as you as you play. That it does come with experience and you won't immediately make the right calls all the time. I don't make the right calls all the time. Um, it's hard to be able to identify every variable that could um, crop up as you're exploring the map, meeting new sieves, deciding what to do with those sieves. You, know, you can't you can't make the right call all the time. So yeah, just uh, keep that in mind. Uh, looks like we might lose this warrior to a polar bear because I wasn't paying that much attention. I was talking, uh, <laughs> and uh, so I missed that. Yeah, our warrior was killed by the polar bear. Uh, it's a little bit unfortunate, but not hugely so. Uh, we have mapped out that the Dravidians have built a uh, second city down here. I imagine the Incas will probably build another city, probably up here, possibly up here, maybe over here towards um, the floodplains. We don't know about any sieves in this direction. Uh, if we get more scouts, they'll be heading off in that way. And I might build some more scouts in my capital to ensure that we do that. Uh, but not before I build another settler, because... Uh, as an expansion of Civ, we want to get more. We can get our settlements down faster because we build our settlers quicker. So we want to again play to our strengths. We we build settlers faster, so let's build a lot of settlers whilst there's still land that we can grab without killing anyone, um, because we are very good at killing people. We are a militaristic Civ. Um, so once we get to warfare, that's not going to be a problem for us. But before we get to warfare, we need to make use of our um, of our strengths. Um, so I'm probably going to get these four cities. The, these four cities are going to be our core, our core realm, if you would. So I want to try and get them up and running as quickly as possible. Um, and they're going to be building a lot of the uh, things to keep the uh, the sieve up and running. Uh, so rather than our capital uh, building things that might give us uh, commerce, trade, that kind of stuff, we'll have these cities build it instead. Uh, Priyagas now, as uh, borders have now expanded. As we can see, the Incas did indeed build a city up here, uh, so that's good to know. Uh, years of peace have strengthened our relations. Uh, we now have a border with them, so they we know that they are not very pleased with borders. Uh, the Dravidians are probably okay with that. Oh, it's the Vikings. Hello, Vikings. I don't think anyone else wants to open borders with us, so they're not um, interested in being friends. So this sieve is a sieve we might end up becoming very friendly with. Oh look, this is where the Mongolians are. The Mongolians are down here somewhere. Um, so these guys will probably end up fighting the Mongolians. Uh, and these guys, I imagine, will probably end up fighting us unless they fight the uh, the Nairi tribes over there. Or Nairi, or however you say their name. Again, I, I butcher the, the names of these sieves um, pretty drastically. Uh, we didn't discover any new resources in particular. We did discover some cotton here, uh, so I guess we could build a city there, but unfortunately the AI built a city right there, um, so we can't build one there, it's too close. Um, but as a rule of thumb in the early game, four cities is probably the number you're aiming for. Uh, you don't need more than that. Um, yeah, you really don't need more than that. Okay, so Priyaga is now increased to size 3. Uh, it's getting quite a good amount of production uh, from this mine and the sheep. Uh, I was building a road in this direction, but now the borders have expanded. I want to go build that winery. Uh, we are the most cultured sieve in the, in, in the world. That's very nice. We also discovered fishing. Uh, we're now going for sailing as a tag, so... Oh, our scout got destroyed. Ah, oh, by Barbarian Primitives, so the Barbarians are starting to spawn. We'll need to get some more defenders to uh, um, protect our, our borders. Okay, let's uh, go sort out that winery. I'm not too bothered about connecting the, the resources up. Um, and I'd say the same for anyone playing the game. Don't worry too much about connecting resources in the early game. It's more important to get the resources improved so they provide more um, base value, uh, which is much more important. Okay, Tupac Inca has adopted slavery. Um, this is something you should pay attention to. The kind of civics that the AI adopt will inform you of what technologies they have access to. Uh, slavery, if you take a look, is 
uh, requires mining, which is actually quite a late tech down the um, down this particular tree. It actually requires bronze working. They already have mining, uh, which means that they have bronze working, which means that they have access to short swordsmen, um, which are a four strength unit. So we do need to be careful, and it is probably a good idea for us to uh, change our tech slightly uh, to pick up archery a bit quicker because we're probably going to want some archers to protect our cities uh, from the Incans. I also want to grab bronze working a bit sooner um, because that's also going to be very helpful. Okay, our cities are now connected via the coast uh, along that river. So it's good to know. Uh, we've got another city up here, Indra Prastha. Uh, we're going to build a storyteller circle here. Again, for the culture and the bonus science. It's very helpful. Um, uh, Thoros will trade corn. Will he now? Trade corn for sheep. I might do that just because it will improve relations uh, with them. Yeah, I like the idea of that. Let's, uh, let's trade corn for sheep. Just because, it, again, it's it's having trade relations, long-term trade relations will improve your overall diplomatic situation with civs. So even though the trade itself has no value, the fact that we are trading has value. Um, so yeah, just is and it's it's just about you know trying to make friends, make friends, um, decide who your enemies are going to be in advance, but make friends. That's my that's my advice. Uh, for the early game. Uh, after building the Nazca lines, I think we we're going to want to build some archers. Um, not too many, though, because our archers aren't that good. Uh, they have poor morale and they don't really have any bonuses. Um, uh, the capital, I'm going to try to grow it slightly before I build another settler because our tech rate is dropping. Um... I don't really see a reason to build the weaver's shop here, but I always leave these for far too long. Um, so we'll build a weaver's shop just to give us a bit of commerce. I could also build a ship as a scout. Uh, building a ship as a scout probably makes more sense. So we, we can maybe discover some more sieves that want open borders. Uh, open borders very important. As I said, uh, if you notice uh, the text that are blue, so if you take a look at bronze working, it's blue, it says at the bottom there, 40% from tech transfer, which means we are getting uh, tech diffusion from the fact that we are opening borders with uh, uh, the Chola Empire. Right, let's um, not worry, again, don't worry too much about building roads, uh, worry more about improving resources first. Okay, I think once the Nazca lines are done, we'll call that the early game, because I think that's a pretty reasonable um, pretty reasonable early game. We got a wonder, met some civs, built some cities, that's more or less what you're aiming to do. Okay, uh, so we got our first ship, and I'm just going to tell this to auto-explore. Uh, there's no reason for me to manually control that right now. Okay. Uh, our tech rate is dropping. At, generally speaking, you want to have a tech rate of around 70%. Uh, however, in Realism Invictus, you want to expand. Expanding is very, very important. If you're too slow on expansion, the AI will gobble up that territory and you will miss out. So I do recommend that you focus more on expanding than you worry about your tech. Uh, your tech will automatically climb back up as your cities get more productive. Um, and back online. Um, we're not seeing many barbarians. Now, one thing I will note, if you don't see many barbarians, it normally means that you're more central on the map, uh, because the barbarians will gravitate towards the nearest civilizations to where they spawn. And if they spawn and there are other civs surrounding you, they're more likely to go look for those other civs than they are for you. So do keep in mind that you can infer certain things uh, from a lack of barbarians. Um, and there's the Nazca Lines. We managed to finish the Nazca Lines, which is perfect. It means the city is now producing eight culture a turn. Um, it is providing us with great profit points. We can also turn a system into an engineer, which it currently is doing. It actually wants us to have an engineer. Um, 
I would like to have a great engineer. Great engineers are awesome. So I'm actually going to turn on uh, emphasizing great people. Um, now our cities are getting larger as well. I would like to point out, um, as you go into the main screen, you see that we have health and happiness. And as you get more people, uh, you, you consume more health and happiness. Um, a good way to avoid uh, unhealthy and unhappy cities is to go down to the bottom here and just turn on avoid unhappiness and unhealthy. What it does is it means that if your city would become unhealthy or unhappy from growing, the city will uh, sort of stale its growth uh, so it won't actually get additional population. So I just recommend doing that in all of the cities that you build. It's just it removes some hassle and micromanagement from the game that you don't necessarily need. Um, right, so yes, I should stop ending turns because we're about half half an hour in and um, we've made some good progress. Made some very good progress, actually. Uh, we've got ourselves a wonder. We've got some of our early cities down. We're building some more. Playing to our strengths, our expansionist strength, um, we'll play to our militaristic strength once we've got a bit more of a power base to work with. And again, there's no point making enemies when there's still plenty of land to go around. Uh, once the land starts getting a little bit tighter uh, around the waist, then we might decide to uh, make some swords. Uh, but until that point, uh, we're quite happy to expand peacefully. Um, if any of you have any questions uh, about the what you've seen in game or whatever, please do just leave it in the comments of the video. I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, and hopefully I can answer whatever queries you might have uh, regarding the, the tutorial or the game. It is here to help people. Uh, so don't, if you, if you think your question sounds stupid or it's like an obvious point, don't worry. Um, even if it's something that's going to come up in later videos in the series, uh, I highly recommend you ask because it is here to help people get into uh, Realism Invictus and more importantly Civilization 4 which I think Civilization 4 is the best uh, of the Civilization series to date. It's the one I've played the most. I have played more or less all the other civs um, but I've just really not taken to the newer civs and I feel like this is a culmination of the, of, of, the, of, the, of the real great aspects of civilization. And Realism Invictus, whilst being more complicated and complex, it just offers so much more. So you, it really it really adds up to a great experience. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. Anyway, before I ramble too long, it's been me, Chaff Commander Coffee. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, uh, have a good one and stay safe during these uh, quarantine times. I mean, you should have uh, a lot of time on your hands to play a lot of Civ. So I expect to see some real pros come out of the, uh, the quarantine from all this. Anyway, uh, I'll see you around.